Alexander, let's talk about the series of concerts, which I know are called symphonic soundscapes. Um, give us a flavour of the, the kinds of soundscapes that you're going to be uh, performing. So the, the, the soundscapes that we're going to be exploring are the soundscapes of Sibelius and Prokofiev. And um, the reason uh, behind this is twofold. So firstly, as we move into 2017, we're, we're moving into the 100th anniversary of both, both the founding of Finland as we know it today, a hundred years, and then of the Bolshevik Re Revolution, so the October Revolution. So two seismic events in the history of those countries. Um, and both of these composers lived right across uh, that seismic event. Um, they are also in and of themselves fascinating composers to look at uh, in parallel, because as we reach the end of the 19th century, um, the symphony has uh, in a sense had its time. People are starting to look towards the tone poem, uh, programmatic music is starting to come to the fore. Um, and of course there's the continuation of the symphonic tradition with Mahler. But Sibelius um, with his seven symphonies takes the symphony to a very different place. Uh, and I wanted to look at that journey between the first symphony and the seventh symphony where Mahler is in a sense expanding. Um, as Sibelius is distilling down until we get to this seventh symphony. I mean, it's not quite as simple as that, but ultimately that journey to the seventh symphony is an extraordinary one. And he created his own uh, oeuvre there, a, a really important symphonic oeuvre that, that ended in the 20th century, as did Prokofiev. Um, he picks up with his classical symphony, but he couldn't, have, he couldn't have thought of it more perfectly, the first symphony, the classical symphony, and then he goes on his journey, also of seven symphonies. So that's the soundscape we're looking at. Let's uh, look ahead to January um, with both of you in that case, when you, Alexander, will be conducting, you, Chloe, will be performing the violin. Just, just take us through what uh, the audience can expect on that particular occasion. So it's the second concert in our, in our series, uh, Symphonic Soundscapes, in which we're exploring the music of Sibelius and Prokofiev, um, and particularly with an eye to what was happening in the world of music, but also geopolitically. These two men uh, their lives and the lives of all the people around them were affected by the October Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. Um, and in a sense, there's the history of Finland and history of Russia pre-1917 and post-1917, but also there's the history of the symphony uh, pre and post Sibelius. So they, they both, uh, and Prokofiev, they both picked up uh, the 19th century model and took it in very interesting directions of their own. So in this concert, we're looking at Prokofiev for the first time in the series and his uh, symphonic output. We begin with his classical symphony, which, as one would imagine, is in a very classical form. And then we jump to his third, in which you hear his far more distinctive voice. I mean, already in the classical symphony, there are distinct elements of Prokofiev. But in the third, he spreads his wings. And of course, uh, the fabulous. Uh, the fabulous Sibelius violin concerto with Chloe, which I'm looking forward to tremendously. Likewise. Talk us through the challenges that that poses the violinist, Chloe. Um, well, I'm, I love performing the Sibelius. It's such a wonderful piece. It has so much variety in terms of emotions, in terms of colour, dynamics. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful piece to play. The last movement um, is sort of notorious, I think, in a way for, for being quite technically um, challenging at times, um, but I just really enjoy playing it. It's just so much fun um, to, to, to play it, so, so yeah. Alexander talked about what those two composers, Prokofiev and Sibelius, mean to him. What do they mean to you, Chloe? Um, well, I have to say that they are actually two of my favourite composers, and Prokofiev has always been a, a long-time favourite of mine, ever since I was tiny, um, and I love performing both of his violin concerti. Um, Sibelius, again, is, is very, very special to me. Um, I've been to Finland many, many times, um, and I can, it's the way you can sort of picture Finland within his music, I think, for me, which is, is so wonderfully special. So it's and technically very demanding. It, it, it can be, it can be. That's where a lot of practice comes <laughs> in, hopefully. Um, no, I've, I've, I've been playing the concerto now for ooh, over, certainly over 10 years and probably closer to 15. Um, and just every time I come back to it, I find something new within it. Um, and yeah, the last movement is just this amazing culmination of, of the whole piece. And as both composers lived through the year of 1917, do you see an almost immediate change in the music that emerges well, afterwards compared with before? No, I, it's more gradual. It's more gradual. And, and of course, the uh, 
Prokofiev and Sibelius reacted different ways. I mean, Sibelius was, was taken as a, a sort of iconic figure by his country. Uh, the second symphony, which, which is in the first program of the festival, um, uh, was, was written actually 10 years earlier, in fact, almost 17 years earlier. Um, but already then, this was during a period of Russification of Finland, uh, the Finns said, ah, oh, that's you know, an iconic work, it stands for, for Finnish independence. Um, and he was, in a sense, appropriated throughout his, his life for, for, for Finnish ends, and why not? I mean, he's a, he's a great icon. Prokofiev had a, uh, a different experience. He, he, he left Russia, he went to the USA, only to come back again, and at first to be supported by the Stalinist regime, and then, at the end, uh, to be censored by the Stalinist regime, dying on the same day as Stalin, of course. So they had different journeys, and these, these seismic events, because uh, of, of course it was all in the context of World War I as well, these se seismic events couldn't help but affect the people around them. But it's, it's one of the things that I find fascinating in music is how these events, and if these events do affect people. I was going to say, because as you perform, the communication of that journey is, I know, a very important thing to get exactly. Into. So, uh, particularly with this idea of a of a series or a festival, um, I think it's it's nice for our audience to hear from me from the stage uh, prior to each concert and sometimes during the concerts a little bit of, about how the works hang together uh, that they're hearing that evening, but also the broader context of the festival, why we picked certain works. Um, so, I in terms of those works, we're we're performing Sibelius's first, his second, his uh, fifth. His seventh, we're performing this one of Tuonela, we're performing Tapiola, which is, uh, of course, ultimately his, his last statement in symphonic form. Um, and Prokofiev, we're, we're taking his first symphony, his third symphony, and his concerti, which um, they're some of the finest concertos written in the, in the 20th century, without doubt. Uh, the man was an absolute genius. And so what I'll try and do is, is, is talk through those links and connections and try and place it in the context of history for people.